Hello fellow programmers and welcome to a new video on the Future Programmer YouTube channel as we continue to explore the Streamlit package in Python. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about how we can embed media elements into our Streamlit applications, specifically images, videos, and audio files. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Open on my screen right now are two windows. On the left is a Sublime Text window, and on the right is a web browser, Google Chrome. Let's take a look at the files that we'll be working with in this tutorial. To start off, we have mediaelements.py, which is a Python file where we'll be writing our code. I have already started some comments and dividers to make our job easier. In the same folder as the mediaelements.py file, we have a folder called media. Inside are four files. Firstly, we have audio.mp3, which is an audio clip of some birds calling that I took out of a video that I captured a while back. And then we have image.jpg, image2.jpg, and video.mp4. These are images and videos that I took in the past couple years, and we'll be using these four files as our media elements. To begin our programming, let's run this file so it opens on the right side in our web browser. To do that, you can either go into your terminal and type in streamlet run media elements.py and hit enter. Or if you're using Sublime Text, you can take advantage of the Sublime Streamlet package that I introduced in a past video by using the Streamlet build system, as you'll see right here. And you can see right now we have the file open, although it says st is not defined. So to fix that problem, we can simply do ist, so import streamlet as st. And I'm going to change this file so it always rerun. So every time we save something on the left side, the changes will be made to the right side as well. To begin, let's take a look at image. So how can we place an image inside of a streamlet application? It's quite simple. We can use the st.image function, which takes a couple parameters. The first one is image. This is the actual image that we want to show. There are several ways we can pass in this argument. The easiest and most common way is going to be pointing a file path at the image we want to show. So in this case, we have image.jpg, which is a file inside of the media folder. So to show this image, we can use media forward slash image.jpg. Next, we have caption, which is an optional caption that we can show beneath the image. Before I change this, we can just take a look at how it looks right now. So if I save the file, we can see the image of the waterfall shown on the right side. Now I can change caption to, let's say, a waterfall like this. And we don't really care about width right now. So we can just delete this argument for now. And we can see a waterfall. This caption is shown below the image right here. So this is how we can embed an image into your Streamlit application. But what if you want to embed more than one image in one row? So let's say if I want to show this image and this photo in one row in our Streamlit application, perhaps to compare two photos or to make some sort of point. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this line right here. We can see we have the same image shown right here. I'm going to pass, instead of one image path, I'm going to pass two as a list. So this is a list, and we're going to pass in both image.jpg and media slash image2.jpg. And right now we can see an assertion error cannot pair one captions with two images because we have a single caption paired with two images. So obviously that doesn't work. So we're going to pass in a list of two elements for caption. The first is going to be a waterfall and the second is going to be many, let's say flying birds because that's what that photo is. And now we can see the error has been resolved and we have two images shown right here. But they are placed vertically adjacent, so they aren't in one row. To change that, we can use the width argument. So width, let's give it a width of 300, which is going to place these two images side by side with the exact same width as a single image would. So here are two images placed side by side, each with their own caption shown right here. Now let's talk about how we can show a video inside of our Streamlit application. The easiest way to do this would be using the same method that we use for images. So if I have st.video, I can pass in data 
as the file path. And I'm going to pass in media slash video dot mp4 format it. I'm going to leave this as video slash mp4 because that's the format of our video. And we can optionally pass in a start time, which is going to be when the video starts playing when the page loads. So I'm going to leave this as zero right now. And we can see this right here. I can click on this button right here to play this video, which is a time lapse I took at the mountain. Seven seconds of the time lapse video. And I can change the zero to, let's say, three. And now we can see if I reload this page and scroll down, we'll see that the playhead has been placed at three seconds. If I change this to, say, four and click always rerun, this will be at four seconds. But usually we just want to leave this at zero. To add a caption to this video, we can use the st.caption function that we learned in an earlier lesson of this series. So I'm going to pass in time lapse of a mountain. And we don't really care about the second argument. So we'll leave this as it is. And we can see time lapse of a mountain is shown right here. Now, this method is great if you want to show a file stored locally on your computer, like the one right here. But what if you want to show a video stored on the internet, let's say a YouTube video. Well, you can do that using Streamlit as well. So here I'm going to use st.video and instead of passing in a local file path, I'm going to pass in a link to a YouTube video that I uploaded for this very purpose. So I'm going to paste in a link, which is basically a time lapse that I took at somewhere else. And we can see video is MP4, that's fine, start time. We can also change this if you would like. And I can click on this and we'll see this time lapse playing. And that's it. We can also add a caption right here, st.caption. I can put time lapse of a valley because that's what this video is. And I'll delete the second argument once again. And that's how you can show videos in your Streamlit applications. Now note that for both image and video, you can actually pass in the raw data of your image and video instead of passing in a predefined file path. And that's especially useful if you're using a machine learning model or some sort of generative AI to generate a video or a photo. You can pass that raw data into Streamlit and it will display it in your application. Now let's move on to the audio section of this video. So we can also show audio files in our Streamlit applications using the, you guessed it, st.audio function. And we can pass in, once again, a file path. Or we can pass in raw data, but we're going to pass in the predefined file path in this case. So media slash audio dot mp3. The format we're going to leave at audio slash wav. And start time, once again, we can change this if we want, but at this point, we just won't. And we can add a caption, st.caption, a bird calling, like so. So now if I scroll down a little bit, let me actually reload this page so it looks a bit nicer. We can see an audio file right here, three seconds of audio, and I'm going to click on this. And we can hear the beautiful sounds of a bird calling. So that is how you can embed images, videos, and audio files into your Streamlit application using the st.image, st.video, and st.audio functions. These are great ways to make your Streamlit applications more interesting and interactive. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please consider subscribing to the Future Programmer YouTube channel down below. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to answer them. With that said, thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in future videos on this channel.